If you are broke, you are in sin. Well, I guess half the church is in sin then. William Murphy is an ungodly person. His church is ungodly. There's nothing godly about it. Remember, this is the same person that wanted to dedicate a baby. Nothing wrong with the baby. Nothing wrong with that at all. The child is innocent, but of a well-known, famous lesbian couple. This is him. He does not. He does not care about anything of the Bible. He cares about himself. And there's a particular passage that, from the beginning to the end of this chapter, refers to him. And he makes a statement about money. Make no mistake about it. William Murphy is about money. William Murphy is about himself. Listen to me. You cannot serve both. You cannot serve both. But you can have both. So what he's talking about is this passage in Matthew 6, 24, where he says, you cannot serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other. He will be devoted to one and despise it. You cannot serve God and wealth or God and mammon or God and money. And his point is, it's almost like an in and around kind of a, uh, an outlet, an exception, a loophole. You can't serve God and money, but you can have both. Well, the fact of the matter is, if they are both on the same level, it's the same as serving. But the reason why he wants to make this point is because he wants you to know that it's OK for you to have money. More importantly, let's be clear. It's OK for him to have money. Hard work bought this Gucci. I didn't sold everything but booty. That's him. That's how he talks. That's how he thinks, because he's about Gucci. He's about all these other things. He's about the way he dresses. He's about his money. See, y'all still think this a money message. Y'all, y'all just, how you gonna not say nothing after I say that? You can't serve both, but you can have God and wealth. Tap everybody around you. They must be broke. They ain't saying nothing. Tap them and tell them you can have God and wealth. Say it loud. That's how you indoctrinate the people to become part of their sin. One, you're tapping into their greed, just like we saw in the garden where the serpent shows up and he convinces her to eat this fruit. Why? Because the Bible says that it was already desirous to her. It was appealing to her. And so you can tap into something that might be desirous or appealing. It could be of the flesh. And if you've got a pastor that is, that's got a weak membership, meaning weak that they don't know the Bible, then it's easy to get them to make this chant too, because if they say it, they will internalize it. It'll be part of what they want. And so they become these sinful people that we see in First Timothy chapter six. Now we're going to see where this becomes a different doctrine. And so this is also inclusive of, of what he's saying. But if anyone advocates a different doctrine and does not agree with sound words, those of our Lord Jesus Christ and with a doctrine conforming to godliness, he is conceited, just like he is, and understands nothing, which is exactly uh, descriptive of him. But he has a morbid interest in controversial questions and disputes about words of which arise envy, strife, abusive language, evil suspicions, uh, and constant friction between men of depraved mind, which he is, uh, and deprived of the truth, which he is, who, su who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. He thinks that in the position that he is, that's how you get gain, not knowing that it is godliness that actually is gain. Look what he says, for we have brought nothing into this world so we can take so we cannot take anything out of it. Well, tell that to him. Uh, if we have food and, and covering with these things, we shall be content. No, but he says you've got to have money. As a matter of fact, he goes one step further about people who don't have money, people who are broke. I don't know who lied to you. I don't know who lied, who told you that that not having was synonymous with being saved. I'm going to go step out here. I didn't say that before. I might as well say it again. If you are broke, you are in sin. How do you make that statement when the disciples didn't have money? As a matter of fact, remember, Peter is asked when Peter is, is approached or approaches a man who's asking for alms. Peter didn't dig into his pockets and say, here, here you go. I've got money. No, Peter says silver and gold. I don't have. But what I do have, such as I do have, I give to you. Uh, we didn't see. Jesus says foxes have. I mean, birds of the air have nests. Foxes have holes. Birds have nests. But the son of man has no place to rest his head. He didn't walk around with a with a with a wealthy entourage. And now, 
obviously Jesus could have money whenever he wants to. He is the one that when it's told to go pay the taxes, he says, go over to that fish and get a coin out of the fish's mouth because who he is, is God. But he didn't walk around with wealth. He was not advocating wealth. As a matter of fact, he as well as John the Baptist. How do they come? Not like with the fine clothing, the soft clothing, the effeminate clothing that Jesus called them. Not like them. John came in a meager, uh, humble sense, just like he did as well. But no, listening to this man, this foolish person who's going to lead other people to hell, he would have you believe the opposite, that being broke is a sin. Where is that scripture at? You are a liar. You, my friend, are a liar. You think sin is sleeping around. God said to tell you sin is barely being able to pay your bills. Because what you say to everybody around you who knows that you call yourself a child of God is you say that God don't take care of his kids. Sin is not being able to pay your bills. We see a lot of people in the Bible who do not have money able to pay their bills. Think about Elijah when he goes to the woman who is ready to get kill herself because there's not much left. So what does Elijah do? He says, uh, take these these jars and he fills these jars up with oil. He didn't, he didn't condemn her for sin. That's never been the case. Or the Bible even speaks about a person that has these different debts. Matter of fact, Jesus even talks about a person who has two people who had a lot of debt uh, and one with a smaller debt. And the one that was forgiven the larger debt, he says, that's the one that's going to love more. He doesn't say that person's a sinner. Uh, the same thing with uh, the widow with two mites. Jesus, matter of fact, praised her for not having much, but what she did have, she gave for the benefit of the Lord. She was not trying to get wealthy for that. This man is a liar. He is a foolish human being. When people see a poor person who still gives glory, who still praises the Lord, that's a, that's someone that can resonate with them because it's hard to, if you're poor, to see someone who's wealthy praising God because, well, I guess I have to wait till I get wealthy to praise God. That's in the world of William Murphy, who, again, if I didn't make myself known, make myself clear what I think about him, he is a foolish, clownish human being. I need y'all to hear me because the prophetic decree from last week just continues to confirm what I know God said to me, that this is supposed to be one of the richest churches in this city. Huh? That church is supposed to be one of the richest churches in that city. Does that even make godly sense? This is just, <sighs> I do pray though that he would repent uh, because how about using your, your position, your platform for good rather than sending folks to hell, causing folks to sin. The Bible says, but those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish, harmful desires, which plunge men into ruin and destruction. Look what he says. For the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil and vice. And some, by longing for it, which is what we see here, uh, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. These are people who are clearly not believers, but they moved away from, this is what he says in the first part of chapter 6, moved away from the tenets of the gospel. They want things rather than God. They want uh, what can be given to them rather than the life that can be given to them from the Lord. That's what they're more concerned with. You see how y'all like, don't stay broke. If this ain't for you, come back next week. Maybe I have something for you. If, if you're supposed to stay broke and you believe God don't want you to have nothing, sit there and be quiet and be miserable. But those of you who believe God got something better for you, don't you let your neighbor squash your praise. Go ahead and praise God now. Why not just praise God for the blessing that you have gotten? Again, you're not taking any of this out of here. As a matter of fact, if that's what you want, then fine. Go after all the money that you want. Go get what you can get. And then when you die and go to hell, just don't complain. You did how you wanted to do. You lived how you wanted to live while you were on this earth. And you got what you wanted to get. Now, so, unfortunately, some people are going to make the mistake of going after wealth on this earth and forgetting about God, putting him on the back burner and even still not get the wealth. Can you imagine chasing after wealth and, and, and not getting it and also going to hell? Wow, what a waste. And if you follow this foolish person, William Murphy, who is more interested in walking it out and swagging, serpent and things like that, whatever he's going to do in his church, he's more interested in retaining this worldly culture and using it and bringing it to the church for Christ, which cannot be done. Follow him to hell if you wish. 
and you won't have an excuse because all he, all William Murphy is really doing, if you're clapping and cheering for that, all he's really doing is tapping into your most inward desires anyway. You want that, which is why you're there at a church like that or other churches like that. And you, my friend, I'm sorry, it sounds harsh, but if that's what you're after, you might get it, you might not get it, but what you certainly will get is hell. Amen.